Hi Soul Risers, welcome back with another new video especially made for you all. Today, we'll be talking about how to win over your negative emotions. We all have been there, have experienced the spiral of negativity. Why do we call it spiral? Because the more we think about it, the more we get absorbed into it. It never stops. If you give it a level of importance, it negative emotions behave like parasites and they might even grow on you. So how do we face or how do we win over negative emotions when we start thinking them or they start coming to us? Today, I will be sharing with you the five key ingredients when it comes to winning over your negative emotions. The first ingredient is practice humility. Well, what does humility mean in the first place and why are we even practicing humility in the face of experiencing negative emotions? First and foremost, humility is a modest view of one's own ability in any given situation. And so when you approach any situation from a humble place, from a place of humility, what happens is you allow yourself to just be. You allow the situation to just be. You don't try to conquer it. You don't try to um, fight it. What you do is when you act something with humility you accept that there's only so much you know and there's only so much you can do and when things are so overwhelming and beyond your control and are making you feel negative when the negative emotions that you're experiencing are so overwhelming and beyond your control practicing humility teaches you that okay it is what it is I am trying my best to do what I'm able to do and there's nothing more that I can beat myself about in this situation. It is what it is. So an attitude of humility comes from an essence of belief or faith and it's sort of freeing yourself from a place of restraint where you feel so caught up in those negative emotions creeping into your mind that you you become obsessed with them and then they take over you. But when you're humble, you say, okay, well, it is right there, fine, I'm just going to let it be, whatever. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and it can keep doing what it's doing. I'm just going to focus on the things that actually matter to me. And if these negative emotions want to stay there, it's fine. I'll just focus on things that matter to me. So, Practicing humility is about is, is a type of letting go. It's about knowing that you're only human. You can't take care of everything in the world. Yes, you can in a way, but not putting that level of pressure on yourself. And approaching any situation with a modesty that it is overwhelming and I am trying my best in whatever capacity I'm trying, but I'm not going to allow it to take all of my time because it is what it is and I'm going to keep doing what I'm keep what I'm going to keep doing. So this is the type of attitude you want to have when you practice humility. Go with the sense of modesty. Go with the sense of you're only human and you're trying your best. And it helps practice this type of ingre this ingredient helps you overcome or win over your negative emotions because when you say that, it is a type of letting go. It is a type of letting go of the fight that you're having with those negative feelings and emotions. You're just allowing them to be and just trying your best, taking it easy. That's the key. Ingredient number two, say a prayer. Now, prayer does have religious connotations and some of you might not be religious and it's totally fine. A prayer could be something as simple as talking to your higher consciousness, talking to something that you believe in or have faith in that is bigger than yourself. 
Maybe it could be your intellect. Maybe it could be your higher self. Maybe it could you could call it your conscience. Maybe you could call it nature. You could even call it God. You could even call it the universe. Whatever that higher power is for you. You say a prayer to it. You say a prayer. By that, it means you simply talk to it. Now, there are several ways of saying prayers. And why is it important? We will get to that. But let me first show you how to say a prayer. In the word pray itself, you can see that there are the words P, R, A, and Y. P can stand for um, phrasing. You always start a prayer by phrasing. So start from a place of phrasing whatever is coming to you. So no matter how dire the situation, you say it is coming to me because it's here to show me something, to teach me something. So I praise whatever is coming to me. The R, the R, the second letter of the word prayer start, stands for, um, you know, expressing your regrets, right? So you could say something like, I'm sorry that, you know, I went through this or I feel bad that I put myself in this situation or I feel bad that I couldn't stand up for myself or I feel bad that I might have hurt someone and now I'm feeling all these like negative emotions around it. So it's all about saying the sorry, saying things that you are sad about. So P is praising, R is expressing your regrets and A is asking. So whatever your higher consciousness is, whatever you believe in that is that you put your faith in or your belief in, it could even be yourself, you could ask that higher power to give you the strength and courage to overcome this. Whatever you want to ask, you can be specific and you can say, it is what whatever I'm feeling, it's taking over my life and I pray and I ask and I seek help and support to overcome this. And then the why of prayer, you can use that, which stands for yielding. Yielding means surrender. So when you say a prayer, you talk to your higher power in praise, in expressing regret, in specifically asking what you're looking for, and eventually turning it all out. So sort of surrendering it, sending it out, and not thinking about it. This is the key to saying a prayer. When you say a prayer, what it does, it, it linguistically helps you articulate yourself in the most precise of manners. And when you do that, you free yourself of any type of hold the emotion has on you. Sometimes emotions have a hold because they just want to feel acknowledged. They just want you to feel allow them to express themselves. And when you do that through the power of language, they leave you, they set you free. And so saying a prayer serves a similar function. The third ingredient not too far away from saying a prayer is practicing gratitude. And I've said this earlier too, and I say it over and over again. Sometimes the negative things in our lives can get such a hold of us that our vision becomes tunnel-like. That's why it's called tunnel vision. So what do we do when our vision becomes like a tunnel, right? Tunnel focus. We can only and only and only and only focus on that specific thing. What you do here is, I know it might be hard, but it's not impossible. And you can do this. You got this. When you feel yourself going into a, that tunnel of thought, you can start by maybe thinking of other avenues that you could take through this tunnel. Maybe there is a little door in the tunnel that you can take that takes you towards other fields of your life that you are actually feeling good about. So it could be something small, it could be something big, it could be something small as you just being able to breathe right now. Or it could be something as big as you accomplishing a lot of other things in your other fields of life, except this one that holds you by the tunnel. And so practicing gratitude is to be able to allow yourself to find that little door through your tunnel vision so that you can see other things in your life that you 
you feel good about and you express your gratitude towards. Gratitude is very symbiotic. It has a very symbiotic relationship with you. When you allow it to grow on you, you grow with it. So gratitude and you, both of you grow together. And it's the most beautiful friend that you can ever have in your life. The most beautiful quality that you can ever befriend in your life. Practicing gratitude. So when you feel negative emotions getting a hold on you, first you can articulate them and see what's it all about. And then second you can say, well, this is just one little part of my life. There is so much more to my life than this and I'm grateful for whatever else I have in my life and I'm going to focus on those parts because I know as those parts have worked themselves out, this little part is also going to work itself out. I am damn sure of that. Gratitude also gives you confidence and so it's a great thing to practice. Ingredient number four, immerse yourself in nature. A lot of people do this consciously or subconsciously but they find that when they take themselves for a hike take themselves for a walk through the forest anywhere that is that that consists of nature that consists of river the waterfall the lakes the mountains the beach there is so much of nature in this world that we ought to be grateful for and when you immerse yourself in nature what happens is your spirit grows magnanimously. And what this means is that you, your attention diverts from yourself towards something that is bigger than yourself. And when this happens, you feel more generous and less selfish. When you feel negative emotions, what's happening is that you're becoming very self-focused, self-centered. And so nature gives you the opportunity to step outside of your little bubble of tunnel thought thinking and look at how beautiful the world is. If you're not immersed in nature, if you're living in a busy city like let's say New York or Paris or any other busy, busy city in the world, what you could do is simply look at the sky or look at the moon in the night or look at the stars. These are beautiful ways of focusing yourself towards nature which is all around us no matter how in 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 the city you feel nature can be found everywhere in something as simple as just looking up at the sky that's nature and so when you look at nature it helps you divert your attention from whatever emotions are overwhelming you and take it takes your attention to something that is bigger than yourself, something that is awe-inspiring. And this leaves you with a generous, magnanimous spirit. And so this is a key ingredient to trying out when you feel you're, you're overwhelmed by negative emotions. The next key ingredient I'm going to tell you about is knowledge acquisition. And one of the things that you can acquire knowledge about is knowing how your brain works. If you know how your brain works, then you can work your brain. It's as simple as that. Your brain, knowing how it works, metacognition, can help you know how to work your brain. And so, one of the ways you can know how your brain works is to understand its plastic nature. Our brains are extremely plastic, which is very, very hopeful because it means that you can tame it the way you want it to be tamed. You can train it the way you want it to be trained. If you want to stop something, you can. You just have to train your brain. And how does it work? The mechanics of it? Well, all of our brains and bodies are composed of what were known at the fundamental level, neurons. And so neurons are the fundamental building systems of your cells, right? There are more fundamental things to that. But let's just stick to neurons for now. What happens is when you pay attention to a certain thing or put a lot of focus on a certain thing, the neurons that are responsible for your thoughts thought about that matter becomes stronger and so there are something there are little things in the within the neurons called microtubules and these 
grow and connect with other neurons as you start thinking about a certain thing. And that's how our brains are wired. However, we're not stuck with the wiring of our brains. We can always rewire our brains. And science has found that just 10 minutes of focusing your thought towards something that pleases you, that brings you to a, a more happier state, helps you rewire your brain in ways that is optimal to your well-being. And so how does your brain work? If you know that neuronal connections takes 10 minutes, a new neuronal connection takes 10 minutes to establish in your brain, you will think for 10 minutes about something that you like or that pleases you and shift your attention towards something that is bothering you. And this helps make the neurons in your brain that is focused towards things that are pleasing you stronger and those things that are not pleasing you and that becomes weaker. Your attention is shifted from into things that you want and those neural connections become stronger. And so let me make, let me add more clarity to what I shared. So when you know how your brain works, you can work your brain. Simple. How do you work your brain? You understand that there are something called neuronal connections in your brain and every neuron is responsible for a specific thought, specific memory, specific learning. And when you focus on something for 10 minutes, the neuron, the new neuronal connection forms within those 10 minutes. And you can strengthen that neuron by thinking of it over and over again. It's your choice whether you want to think about something pleasing and strengthen that neuron versus you want to keep yourself within that negative spiral and strengthen those neurons that are responsible for those negative spirals. And so think carefully about how you want to work your brain. Your brain is plastic, which makes it an elegant organ to work with and you can make it work. At the end of the day, it's you who controls you, not the other way around, not the brain or your programming that controls you. Maybe at first you might feel like that, but you can always reprogram yourself. It is easy and effortless. Everything you say to your brain, it will believe you and it will make, it will form those connections in your brain that help you act and believe in, in healthy things and healthy ways. So to summarize today's video, um, how to deal with, over, over, with negative emotions, how to win over your negative emotions, what you could do is practice humility, take a backstage and say, sometimes I don't have to know everything. So practicing humility allows you to take a step back and view the situation from a level of modesty and surrender. Say a prayer. For those who believe in God, they already know this. For those who believe in something other than God, like a higher consciousness, higher power, nature of things, you could say a prayer that helps you articulate your situation out loud. And that helps bring that situation into awareness and the power that the situation holds on you, that those negative emotions hold on you, gain less power, okay? They become less powerful. Third is practicing gratitude. The more gratitude you practice, the more your attention is diverted towards things that actually matter in your life, towards things that are actually beautiful in your life, and you become one with gratitude. You grow with gratitude. Immersed in nature, if none of the other steps work and you just are looking for something to sort of get your attention off of the negative negativity you're feeling, immerse in nature, go out, hike, do whatever feels beautiful to you when it comes to nature. If you're stuck in a city like New York or Paris or other cities like this where nature is minimal, you can always find nature around you such as the sky, the moon, the stars. 
And immersing yourself in nature helps you see how magnanimous and beautiful the world is and that you're just a little tiny thing in this magnanimous, beautiful world. And it inspires you to be less self-centered and selfish and more generous in spirit. Lastly, know how your brain works because when you know how your brain works, you can master it. And so one of the ways to master your brain is practice 10 minutes of good thinking, which helps new neurons form in your brain and strengthen. And this dictates the way you take actions, the way you feel, think, and behave. So do practice these five ingredients in whatever sequence or way you would like and see how, how it feels. A book recommendation that I would like to give you this week is Get Out of Your Head. It's a wonderful book written by Jenny Allen, a New York Times bestseller. It's called Stopping the Spiral of Toxic Thoughts. Get Out of Your Head. Do give it a read and enjoy. Thank you. You are an awesome audience. See you in my subsequent videos. Bye, Soul Risers.